So let's go back and do some troubleshooting here so that we know exactly what is going on. So on click, we have this. So let's go back here. Now the mistake we made here, since there are no errors here, I'm guessing actually it's working, but the only thing is we didn't put a, uh, a way for us to get a result. So this is very important. We have to start listening for our result before we even send this item because we don't know when it might come back. We might, if we start sending like this and then we initialize our event listeners down here, what will happen is we may send our data and it will come back before our event listeners are actually activated. So that would be not good because we'll miss the data. So we start listening before uh, we send the data. So let's do this Ajax dot. There are several ways you can do this. You can say on load uh, like that, on load, which is the, an event. And then you say is equal to function like that. And then you can put your code in there. But a more elegant way to do it is to say add event listener. I think this is how the professionals do it. And then let's add an event listener. We'll add this event on an event called uh, ready, ready state change like that. So there are states that change when this, uh, for example, when we open the Ajax, when we build it, there's an event change. When we open it and when we send, uh, there's a state change. So there's state zero, there's state one, there's state two, but state four means we've returned a result. So that's what we'll be looking for. So this is the event we are looking for, but then we'll have to provide a function. We'll use an anonymous function here to capture the result like that. And then let's put our semicolon at the end because this is still a line, but we want to put a lot of stuff here. So I will do that. And then in here, we will say, we will check first of all, because we don't want to uh, get the result before the result is back. So we will check for a ready state, the state at that time. So I'm going to say if Ajax dot ready state. Now this is JavaScript. So the state should have a capital cap camel case like that is equal to four because that's the four we are looking for. Uh, the others are for opening and sending and so on. So we, we don't care about those. And there's one for when there's an error and so on. So if you want that, you can check what that is. And then we also want to check for the Ajax response, um, the Ajax status. Now this status is from, oh, don't put a capital there, status. This status is from the HTTP request itself, from the server. So the server will return a status. Now, 404, the reason we call uh, 404 page not found is because that's the error state for when a page is not found, we're going to get a 404. So we don't care about a 404. There's also 500, which is internal server error, but we are looking for a 200, which means okay, right? So let's come back here and do that. Okay, so when this is true, it means we have our result now. So let's just show an alert here and the result is saved in a, a um, a property called response text like so and that's how you get your result so let's see if we're going to get some result from this refresh the page and let's click here we don't need to anyway we cannot leave this open to see if there are any errors and as you can see sent from ajax controller so it's working like magic okay pretty good but before we go, I want us to collect the data from here and then send it to our, our Ajax controller right here. Then we can echo that value. Now, since I sent this as a post, uh, where is this thing? I created a form. So I'm simulating an actual form here. That's how I sent it like this. But you don't always have to do that. You can send the data as JSON. And then on the other side, there will be a different method to capture that data. So some people use that and to capture the raw data that comes here, you'd have to use something like uh, file get contents like this. And then you put inside there, you say PHP, 
actually it's one colon there like so and then you say input so you you set this to data like that data is equal to so this will return a string of data if it's raw data that was sent right so to send raw data in here you just have to send a string you don't need to do this uh, form part here you just send a string and say uh, something like this is my string right just like that you send that that's good enough so we are not sending this form data anymore so if i come back to ajax here and instead i echo the data like this i will say echo data and let's remove this other echo right there so we will see that we will get our data on the other side after we send it so if i click send this is my string you see this is exactly the data we send here so if you're using json for example if you have an object here for example i can create an object here uh, let's say i have var object i'll just say obj is equal to an empty object like that right and then i will say something like uh, obj just assign uh, random stuff to it name is equal to this is my name and then I can say something like, um, let me duplicate this, uh, age, uh, age 24, something like that. And then to send this, I would have to serialize it. So convert this object into a string. So I can send it just like I'm sending this string here. So to do that, I can use a JSON uh, dot stringify stringify and what am i stringifying the object just like that and then you will see that on the other side i'll get a string that contains both these two things so let's see that let me refresh and add oops so now we have an error in our i'm sure i put some um uh, i may have put yeah you know this is a reflex uh, i'm using a php uh, notation here it should be a dot sorry about that i get confused sometimes so click here and there we go and now i can click save and you see now i get a json string you see there's a name there's age there which at the end here i can convert to an array i can just say json uh, decode that will convert it into an array like this so now i can't echo an array i can just print readable the array like so and we will see what happens there we'll get something similar and add and click and so you see now it's an object and it's like that if you like using arrays instead just put true at the end here which will convert that into an array instead of what it says standard object there. So if I repeat that again, let's save. Now you see it's an array and it's got our items there. So that's how you send data if you don't want to send it as a form. But if you want to send it as a form, you do it this way and you put key value pairs like this. And then you finally send the form. But I think... Uh, using objects is much better so we will do it this way instead so what i will do here to send our data instead i will say json.stringify and we'll stringify our data and send it right there so we'll send through that data so i don't need this anymore go but if you're sending the data as form i actually didn't show you how to uh, view this one second let me put the form down here let's uh, let's do that so we are creating a new form and adding some data and sending it as a form so when we get to the ajax here instead of all this uh, we don't need that so the data will be inside the post so i'm just going to say print readable like that print r and use the post variable like this as normal right so if I refresh my page, do that and click there, I will get an array of the form. My name, name, my name, which is what I sent. 
So it's entirely up to you if you want to use the post variable or you want to do it the nerdy way and use file get contents and convert to JSON and so on and so forth. Uh, you can do this is the easy way out. So I think many of you already know how to handle this. So I think we will go for this method so that you learn something new.